Hi, welcome to Open Education Channel and this is ASP.NET Core MVC series. So in the last video, we saw the project structure of a typical ASP.NET Core MVC project. Uh, that project was uh, using ASP.NET Core version 1.1, but recently a newer version of ASP.NET Core is released. Actually, the newer version of .NET is released, that is version 2. So uh, we have a new version ASP.NET Core 2.0. So I have also updated the Visual Studio. So now in my machine, uh, ASP.NET Core version 2 is installed. So in this video, we will see the changes in ASP.NET Core version 2. So for creating a project, we will go to the file, new and new project and uh, from the dialog box, we will select ASP.NET Core Web Application. And uh, okay, I will uh, go ahead with the with this name. I will click on OK. And uh, in this next box, uh, as like in earlier version, uh, we have the option for .NET Core or .NET Framework, and also here the version of ASP.NET Core. Uh, for some reasons, uh, it is not showing the version 1 and version 1.1. After the update, it is showing only the version uh, 2. Also, here are some of the uh, updated templates uh, which are available with ASP.NET Core version 2. Like uh, the new edition is this uh, Angular template uh, which is used to create Angular application using ASP.NET Core and uh, sp.net core as a backend and angular as a frontend and then is the react.js for the frontend and sp.net core as a backend and react.js and redux okay so as we are seeing the sp.net core mvc application so i will select this web application here and uh, click on ok so here is the uh, new uh, the project, that new sp.net core 2 project and uh, uh, you can see the files are almost the same, they are, there is no change in the file names uh, uh, but there are some changes like in the startup.cs class, sorry file and uh, in the uh, program.cs file like here uh, now uh, they are in the main method previously you have seen that in the main method we were creating host but now uh, they have added build web host and uh, in the build web host method what they are doing is they have used the create default builder so uh, actually they have packaged the whole thing in the one method let me show you uh, there are some changes in the uh, packages like if we go here to the edit.cs project file so here you can see that uh, in the references there is only one reference that is the microsoft sp.net code at all and the version is 2 so in the previous version there were like sp.net core and then the entity framework and you know many packages but uh, they have simplified the packaging so all you need is just to add one package that is asp.net core.all and this single package contains all the other packages like uh, uh, packages for entity framework packages for uh, mvc packages for .net core packages for razor pages and you know many more many more packages so uh, because of this new change and uh, so they have uh, they have bundled all things like in the previous version we were using uh, like use kestrel use is integration we are defining the content route in the main method so you know these things were the default settings and they were used in the most of the project so they have uh, you know uh, wrapped them in just a single method that is create default builder and then uh, they 
in the same old way they are specifying the user startup class and then the build. So if we go to the startup class right here, uh, we can see that uh, there are some changes in the constructor previous. Previously here we were adding the configuration like we are adding configuration uh, from the JSON, XML, any file. All those things are still happening but they are happening behind the scene because uh, of this uh, uh, create default builder they are automatically happening uh, behind the scene but if you want to uh, change them you can overwrite it here and uh, also in the configuration method you can see that uh, previously here was the logging setup like app dot use logger something like that but now that thing is uh, moved to that create default builder that thing is handled by that uh, by default from that uh, one wrapper method so now if you want to change it you can just uh, again write it here but uh, it is automatically happening behind the scene and then the same uh, environment dot is development and so if it is in development then it will use the uh, developer exception page if any error occurs and it will use the browser link and if, if if it is in production then it will show the uh, standard uh, error page which is defined in the home controller and then is the user static files and then the use mvc where uh, it is defining the root so uh, you know most of the things are the same uh, there are the new apis available in this uh, release so project structure is not very much changed uh, only the most of the codes are uh, wrapped in this uh, create default builder so uh, most of the things are handled behind the scene by default uh, by the sp.net core so you don't have to explicitly write it unless you need it so uh, from here we will uh, uh, work on sp.net core 2 because uh, you know after this release microsoft and you know most of the companies will uh, move to this new release and also it is recommended to move to this new release because it has a lot of apis it has uh, uh, lots of new features uh, previously which were lacked in sp.net core version 1 and version 1.1 so in the next tutorial we will see what are the middlewares thank you